This is a great example of a question that rewards people who have done some practice, who are kind of used to the certain shortcuts that the SAT leaves for us. Uh, the first thing we need to notice is this really is testing similar triangles, right? They never use that word anywhere. But anytime you see two triangles, they're overlapping or sharing something, then it's probably a similar triangle. So we're going to use ratios to compare them. So there is a big triangle and a small triangle here. Hopefully you see them both. Otherwise, I don't really have to help you. Go to the geometry basics. Start there. Um, the next thing we need to know is, okay, yeah, we need CE, right? So we're going to need to get the hypotenuse of the big triangle, but we don't have that, right? We don't even have the hypotenuse of the smaller triangle, but that's where I want to start. Because when I look at the smaller triangle, I recognize that this is that special three, four, five, what's called a Pythagorean triple, meaning these are all nice numbers that when we square them and do Pythagorean theorem, everything works out without any decimals or radicals or any mess, right? So three, four, five is the most common one. The SAT loves it. They love it for questions like this. They love it for questions involving trigonometry because it is a great way of seeing who truly understands the geometry that they're doing versus who is more robotically going through the process. Now, don't get me wrong. If you robotically go through the process, you're going to do Pythagorean theorem right here. You're going to do a squared plus b squared is c squared. You'll do 8 squared plus 6 squared is c squared, and you'll solve that whole thing, and you will get the right answer. But if you recognize that this is that 3, 4, 5, and that they've just multiplied it by 2, so that it's 6, 8, 10, in literally three seconds, we've got that hypotenuse there. So that, to me, is a better way to go about it, right? Because then we can kind of see more easily, when we don't have any chance of really making a mistake, we can see the relationships between these triangles. So that three, four, five thing, they're gonna do it. It's a very common concept in the SAT. They used to do it even more when there was a no calculator section on the SAT, because it was a great way of rewarding people who um, just kind of saw it because they could just do it without any calculations at all. Otherwise, the Pythagorean theorem might get kind of tedious without a calculator. So here, it's very, very helpful. Now we need to compare things, right? So we want to compare CE, which is part of the big triangle, to, let's say, 18, the other part of the big triangle. Uh, and we can do that by saying, okay, the, the hypotenuse of the small triangle is 10. So small on the right, big on the left. And then what is the corresponding side to that 18? Well, it's 6. Now again, we can cross multiply and divide. Some of you are just gonna see though that how do we go from six to 18? We multiply by three. How do we go from 10 to CE? We're also gonna multiply by three. That is just how these things work. So 10 times three is 30 and that is our answer. So that's it. Um, not so bad. Just notice that they asked for CE. I could have easily seen them making this question slightly harder by asking for something like DE, right? A, a, another measurement that's kind of related to CE, but is shorter and it just adds another step. So just be careful of that. But otherwise, this to me is a textbook geometry hard question on the SAT. It is, it is tedious in certain ways. There are little shortcuts we can take. Some people are going to have a lot, a lot of trouble kind of setting it up. But for the most part, it is very simple, similar triangle set up a ratio. So you got to be able to master this. There's going to be harder stuff, weirder stuff for sure. So if you can't do this, then that other harder stuff is going to be really, well, harder.